Hey everyone, I decided it was time to revisit my city generation, and here's what I've come up with. This is a city using 15 million static meshes, and you can see it runs at 30 FPS when I'm just standing around. It drops a little bit as I move, and there are occasional hitches, but every single thing in here has collision. Uh, there's a floor for every single building, every single window is its own static mesh and it generates remarkably fast. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Let me show you how I did it. All right, let's build this thing. First step, I'm going to pop into starter content, architecture, and I'm going to be using the floor, wall window, possibly wall door. So let's go ahead and enable nanite on those. And now I want a piece that I'll use for a corner piece. So let me just grab in this wall, 400 by 300. And I'm going to just rotate it to the side, 90 degrees. And pull up the modeling tool with Shift-5. And for this, I'm going to go to XForm and click on Merge to merge these two objects. And now, if you look at these merged objects, you can still see that they're two, basically two models. So let me go ahead and go to Mesh and hit Union. And the reason I merged first is because that keeps the, the center point down here, the pivot point down here, and if you just Union, it'll center the pivot point. So this is just my little lazy shortcut. Okay, and now I have a piece that I can use for my building corners. I'm going to call this one SM underscore wall underscore corner underscore 400x300. And I will create a new folder for my work. Main. Pop that open. And I'm going to make a meshes folder for that, and let's drag this on in there. Move here. All right. So now I've got my corner piece. I can start on my graph. I'm going to start with a blueprint. BP underscore buildings. And let me make a PCG as well to accompany it. PCG underscore buildings. And I can open both of those. In the blueprint, I'm going to add a PCG component and set it to my new PCG buildings. Compile and save that and go ahead and drag it into the world. And now I have buildings to work with. So what I need to do for this is first, well, create a point. So I'm going to get actor data, self, get single point. And now I want to turn this point into four corners. So for that, I'm going to just add some transform points and manually create the four corners. line these up nicely. Yeah, they're not lining up. There we go. <clears throat> so the first one I'm going to modify on the x-axis. Let's make that 4,000 by 4,000. Second one on the x and y axis. Let's make both of those 4,000. And last one on the y axis, 4,000 by 4,000. And so what I've done here is 4,000 is 10 times 400, and 400 is the unit size of the meshes I'm using. So this is going to make a 10 by 10 building. Now if I go ahead and merge all of these, and let me go ahead and create a debug node that I'll be reusing later. I'm going to set this to absolute 1 and hook the merge up to that. And there we go. We've got our four points. All right, so we need to convert these four points into walls. So let's go ahead and do that. Because I dragged these points in order, 
that makes a circle that I can use as a spline. So create spline. I'm going to set it to closed loop and linear. Linear is nice because it, um, well, let's uh, hook this up to debug and show you. So if I don't have linear on, we get a rounded spline. And if I do put linear on, we get a squared spline. And a squared spline is a little more useful for most buildings. So now that we have the spline, let's add a spline sampler. And my data is going to be on spline distance, and I want the distance increment to be 400 to match the to match the mesh sizes. All right, so the create spline is now hooked up directly to the spline sampler. And we can double check what we've got there. Nothing. So if I go back in here, the spline sampler, I'm going to need to check unbounded. And there we go. Now we have some nicely sampled points. Lastly, we can go ahead and hook up a static mesh spawner. And I'm going to set this to add a mesh entry, make it be the wall underscore window, 400 by 300. And I'm going to turn off collision, no collision. And there we go. We've got the starting of a building. Let's go ahead and add the corner pieces that I created. We have two ways of doing that. One, we can make a spline sampler. And if we scroll up, subdivision on spline, let's set it to zero subdivisions per segment. And if I hook that up to debug, we can see here that I've got a point on, well, let me go ahead and set unbounded again, a point on every single corner. But we can actually go a little simpler than this, because this merge point right here already has that data. So I'm just going to use this merged point data. And let's go ahead and hook that up to another static mesh spawner, wall underscore corner for this one. And just unhook that. And here's the static mesh spawner. Delete the sampler. And there we go. We've got our walls, but they are not rotated correctly. So let's add some rotation to these things. What I'm going to do is rotate them each in sequential order. So the first one is going to be rotated 90, second one 180, and third one 270. And if you look at this, that should, you know, zero, rotate it one tick to the right, rotate it two ticks to the right, and rotate it three ticks to the right. Let's see what that does. 90, 90. 180, 180, and 270, 270. Close, but everything needs to rotate one more tick to the right. So I'm going to add another transform points at the top here and hook the actor into that one and unhook this node. Actually, I'll unhook all of the node because I want to hook up to this merge in order. So one two, three, and four. And this first transform point, I'm going to set to rotated 90, 90. The second one, 180, 180. Third one, 270, 270. And the last one, zero, zero. And I do need this last one, even though it's set to zero, because it's still offsetting by the Y axis. All right, so let's see what that is. Perfect. And now I do need to remove the points that are under here. So if I raise this up, you'll see what I mean. Add a transform points here. And let's make this transform points be offset 300, 300. And there we go. So these points are still right under the corners, so I can get rid of them. And for that, right after this spline sampler, I can add a difference node. I'll set it to binary and hook everything up. And now I can drop this thing right after the merge. And let's put a bounds modifier on this because I'll probably want to mess with the bounds right up to the differences here and see what we have. 
All right, so that's removed one of them. And the reason it's removed one of them is because the transform points is on a separate line than the bounce modifier. So the bounce modifier is still you know, right down here. So now that I'm looking at the bounds modifier, let's uh, expand it a little bit. So let's change it to set and negative 50, 50, kind of as a standard little bounds, and affect steepness. And now what do we have? Nothing different. Negative 100 on the x-axis, and let's see what we have. So this debug, I need to change it to extents. Let's look at that. There we go. Okay, so the x-axis is the right axis. I'm just going to need to move it up this other way. Let's try 200. Perfect, so 200 has removed this other point. So I'm set. Now I can remove this transform points and just hook the static mesh spawner directly up. Let's go ahead and make this a little nicer looking. There we go. And we have our first set of walls. So next, we have two options. We can make the floors or we can make the stories. I'm going to go with making the stories, so let's do that now adding a transform points off this get actor data. And offset min and max, let's just make it 10 high. So if you remember, this mesh I'm using is 300 high. So if I make, so if I make it 3000, it's going to be 10 high. And now I just have to use another merge node. And let's hook debug up here. There we go. That's our top story. And now I can add my own create spline here. And I will make it not a closed loop and hook that up. And let's add a spline sampler. Spline distance, and distance will be 400. And if I debug that, and again, unbounded, debug that. can't really see much. Let's change this debug back to absolute. There we go. There are our points. And actually, the distance increment for this one should be 300, not 400. And there we go. Now we have 10 points. All right, so let's go ahead and copy this on up to the splines. I can just do a copy points. And the target will be this spline, and the source will be, well, both of these, this corner and this outside. So let's uh, start with the outside, the walls, and a second copy points for the corners. And now I can hook up these static mesh spawners. So this one's going to be the corners, and this one's going to be for the walls. And let's go ahead and remove this, delete this two point, and see what we've got. Hmm. Hmm. That's not quite right. So, a um, couple things going on here. First of all, the spline we've created for the vertical is actually basically lying on its side. So I'm going to need to reset the rotation on it. And if you look here at this spline, you can see here that the rotation x is 0.7. So to fix that, I just have to drop in a transform points and set it to absolute rotation and hook that on up. And there we go. Now everything is looking correct. But you can see that it is not 
centered on the pivot point anymore. And as I move, it's actually moving at double the rate of the pivot point. So that is because the building outsides are being created at the world position of this actor, and then the spline is also at the world position. So when you copy the building over to the spline, you double the world position. So one of these I'm going to need to zero out, and that's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to unhook all of these transform points and add a create points node. I'll set it to from single points on the point creation method. Count one and do not call points outside volume. Now I can hook it on up to here. And let's go ahead and debug this again. So now you can see the points are getting created at world position zero, but everything is centered on, on the actor. Okay. Now let's make the floors. We have two methods we can go with here, and I'll start off by showing you the most obvious one, and that is to add a spline sampler on interior in the same way as we're sampling the walls. Let's make it unbounded. Interior sample spacing 400, and I'll treat the spline as a polyline, which is basically saying it's straight lines. And now let's go ahead and copy points, just like these other ones. Source here, target's going to be this, and static mesh spawner will be the floor. And see what we've got. So you can see here that everything's a little bit off. And you can fix this. You can round the points and uh, it'll fix it temporarily, but there are a whole lot of other rounding issues you're going to be getting into with the spline sampling on interior. So instead of putting a ton of workarounds in place, my preference is to make a create points grid. And the grid extents is going to be half of the dimensions of the building. So half of that is 4,000 by 4,000. So it's going to be 2,000 by 2,000. Cell size is 400 and 400. And the grid center position needs to be needs to be basically the same as the grid extents. And let's hook this on up and see what we've got. And I got to uncheck cold points outside volume. And so now it's close, but it's still 200 off. So I need to move the center position by another half of the cell size. So 2200 and 2200. Sorry, that's the other way. 1800 and 1800. And there we go. So now it's all lined up. And now I have to figure out the roof. So there's currently one floor per story, but there's the extra roof, which doesn't have a corresponding wall. So let's go ahead and copy this points grid up to the roof point. I'm already close to the roof point with this transform points here at 3,000. So if I just add another transform points, and offset it up by 300. I can then copy points with that as the target and the source, this points grid, and just hook it into the same static mesh spawner. And there's the roof. Now if you look at this roof, you can see that it's having a clipping problem, so I can deal with that by slightly raising it or lowering it, but I prefer raising it. Transform points.
and I'll set the offset minimax to 5 and 5. And there we go. And I like to add a little bit of texture to my roof. So instead of just 5 and 5, I can set it to, let's say, 5 and 25. And there we go, we have some texture. And we have our buildings being spawned. Let's add a little bit of notation to this. So this is going to be the ceiling. This is going to be the floor. I'll call this the floor grid. This right here, including this copy points, is the walls. And this one right down here is corners. And this is the stories. And this is four corners. All right, so we've got our individual buildings spawning. Now we need to create multiple buildings. So let's um, go ahead and do that. I can create a points grid here. And let's set it to, oh, let's say cell size. These buildings are 4,000 by 4,000. So cell size is 5,000 by 5,000. And grid extends 10,000 by 10,000. And now let's just see what happens if we hook the get actor data into here. Nothing. And that's because we're calling points outside volumes. And now, <laughs> OK, so it doesn't exactly work. So all the splines are kind of being created in this uh, fashion, which is connecting everything. So instead of doing this, what I want to do is I'll right click, highlight all of this, except for the create points grid. And I'll right click and collapse into subgraph. And I'll call it PCG underscore individual building. And let me go ahead and drop it in the main folder. Save that. And that'll take a little time. And there we go. We've got our individual building. Let me go into it and modify it slightly. So I don't need both of these transform points in. So I'm going to modify the first one to just be points in. And I'll go ahead and delete the second one. And let's hook this on up to the merge that's creating the stories. And now if I, well, let's move this. I don't even need an output. That was just the debug node. OK, great. So delete this output. All right, and back to buildings. If you look at it, it's still doing the same thing, which is why I'm going to change this to a loop. And I'm going to set the loop to individual buildings and hook that on up. And it's still not doing anything. But if I attribute partition and first attribute copy, or rather copy attribute, I'm going to copy index over to index. And this is going to give me a reference of all of the indexes of these points, a unique identifier, which I then plug into attribute partition on index. And now if I look at this, I have 15 individual points. 
Let's plug that into the subgraph. And we have a bunch of individual buildings. Excellent. So the next step I want to do is add some variables so I can actually tweak these buildings from my blueprint. So let's go ahead and figure out what variables we need. We need the size of the buildings. We need the size of the meshes, so 400 by 400 by 300. We need the space between the buildings, the streets, and the amount of buildings. So in this case, it would be 4x4. Four four. All right, so let's go ahead and add those variables to this blueprint. I'll start off with, let's say, the grid size. That's going to be the size of my mesh, and it's going to be a vector. I'll also add building size and street size and total blocks. And let's expose all of these. All right, total blocks, let's start by 3 by 3. And I'll just use and let's street size, let's set by at, uh, 5 and 5. Building size, 10 and 10. And this is going to be multiplied by the grid size for the actual building size. 400 by 400 by 300 for the grid size. All right, compile and save. And back into the PCG buildings, let's go ahead and modify this points grid. So we've got the grid extents, which is going to correspond to total blocks. We have the cell size, which is going to correspond to the building size. And we don't really need to use anything else. So let's start off with um, cell size. Get actor property. I'm going to get grid size. Grid size. And let's add a note here. Grid size. I'll copy this thing and make this be building size. Building size. And so now that I have grid size and building size, I should be able to... I'm close to defining my cell size. Let's also add in street size. So building size plus street size times grid size is what we need. So add these together and multiply them by grid size and hook that up to cell size. And we don't have anything. And let's see why. Debug that. Building size Z is 0 and grid size Z is 0. So what's happening here is the cell size, even though we're only working on the x and y axis, the z still needs to have a value. So back under my BP buildings, I'm just going to set a default value of 1 for the building size and 1 for the street size, why not? And 1 for total blocks. Compile and save that. And there we go, we've got our city blocks again. And let's see if it's working. 10 on the street size, 15. 5 and 5. Perfect. That's looking pretty good. The building size isn't actually corresponding to anything right now, but that's fine. We'll get to that in a little bit. So let's set up total blocks. That's going to be the grid extents. And as, and as I mentioned previously, grid extents is actually half. It's sort of like the radius of the grid, except it's only in two dimensions. It's not a circle. So the grid extents I want to use is going to be the building size plus the street size times the grid size times the blocks, which is total blocks. And let's see if this works. Oh, then divide it by 2. Divide it 
by create attributes two and hook that up to good extents and three by three five by three five by one five by five perfect so that's uh, looking pretty good All right, let's uh, tidy this up a tiny bit. Let's move this divide over to here. That'll let me slightly better organize all these things. And back into the good extents. And compress that. And there we go. We have our initialized city blocks grid. But if you look at this, shoop, it's not centered on the point, it's just centered on zero. So let's add a copy points in here. And we'll copy these points to the actor center points. Hook that on up. And there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and modify the building sizes as well. So under PCG individual buildings, we can set these transform points. And let's go ahead and get actor property. We're going to need grid size times building size. So let's get grid size. And building size. And multiply these together. And so for this first one, I only want the x axis. So I will multiply this. And let's create an attribute. I'm just going to make it 0. And you may be wondering why I'm multiplying this value by 0. It gives 0. Well, instead of multiplying everything by 0, I'm going to multiply the y and the z axis by 0. And that leaves the x axis unmultiplied, so it works as uh, so it removes the y and z and isolates it to just the x axis. And now for this axis, I'm going to ignore it, but uh, the y axis, let's do the same thing. multiply it by xz, multiply xz, and that gives us the y value, and plug that into offset minimax. And now the reason I skipped the last one, I'm just going to add an add node right in here. And there we go. We now have our dynamically created four corners. Let's go ahead and modify this spline sampler as well. So I'm going to grab the grid size and set. I'm going to break this vector attribute and use the x value. Unfortunately, that means we can't make the grid be based on both the x and the y axis, but. Uh, that adds a lot more complication that I don't want to deal with right now. So let's see what this value we're doing is. Distance increment. There we go. Plug that up to x. And we have our sampled spline dynamically sampling based on the size of the meshes, which I'm not actually going to change for anything, but, you know, that's all right. I can do the same thing for the z axis on this spline sampler.
distance increment is going to be 300 now, since that's the third value here. And let's see, this transform points, it needs to be a similar way as this one, building size times grid size, times zero to isolate the axis. And this is going to be last.xy I'm zeroing out. Grid size times building size, well, right now that's only 300, but we'll modify that. And now I need to take grid size as well and just multiply it by this value for the last roof. And where is the roof? That's right here, the ceiling. Let's expand this and offset min and offset max. Close that on up and we have our ceiling. All right, now I've been working in this PCG for a little bit. Let's uh, tidy it up a tiny bit and then go and check the results. All right, we have our one high buildings, which is too high, it appears. I'm just going to ignore that and move along. So our buildings are dynamically being set in height and all of our variables are working. So now I want to change it so that these buildings are actually blocks and there are individual buildings inside each one of them. So let's go ahead and add another variable for block size. Block size and I'll move it up to above street size let's say and compile and save that. And the block size will be, let's make it bigger than the building dimensions. 2021, let's make the building size, yeah, leave it at 1001, compile and save. Now back in the main PCG graph, I'm gonna change building size to block size. And there we go, block size 1010 makes it look the same. 15, 15, and it's expanding how far apart these buildings are. Perfect, so now I need to uh, create individual buildings inside of here. So let's go ahead and save all. And for creating the individual buildings, what I'm gonna do is a method that I've come up with that's sort of brute forcing it. I'm going to create one point at every uh, grid increment, so every 400 distance, there's gonna be a point. So a lot of points filling this thing up. And then I'm going to randomly resize them up to the building size and make sure they don't go outside the border and self-prune and then they should all line up perfectly. So let me show you how to do that. First off, I need to create the points. And I could do it the same way as, well, I'm going to do it a similar way as this with the four corners. And so I already have this uh, thing to create four corners. Let's go ahead and drag this on over here and turn this into a subgraph. So right click on it, collapse into subgraph, and I'm going to call it PCG underscore four corners. Uh, let's call it point two four corners, be a little descriptive with it, and I'm going to drop it under my main folder, and I'll create a new folder under that for functions. Drop it in there, and there we go. And now we've got point to four corners. It's um, a little messy, so let's open it up. And we only need, uh, let's see, it looks like offset min and offset min 3 are the ones that I can hang on to. So let's delete the rest. I'm keeping the x and the y axes, so min 3 I'm keeping. And that means I'm keeping the top one as well. So perfect, so I can delete these others. And now these are my x and y axes, so let me call it x offset and 
Y offsets. And for the X offset, I can hook it up just like it was previously. And I can add an add node in here for this middle transform points. And the last one, offset min is hooked up. Let's hook up offset max. There we go. And let's find the output. Merge out. I'm just going to call it points out. And let's do it without a space just to be kind of consistent. And remove the space from these also to be consistent. OK. And save that. Now back in individual buildings, we have a function to create four corners. And back in city blocks, everything looks the same. So now back in buildings, let me go ahead and grab this function, four corners. And so the x offset and y offset for this one is going to be block size times grid size. And I can do a similar logic to here, where I'm multiplying them by the various axes that I want to keep. So let's copy that and drop it back in. And I suppose I could have included this in the function. So why not I actually go ahead and do that? Going to grab these here, not this one, and drop it into 0.4 corners. Instead of x offset and y offset, I'll just have an x, y offset. I can delete this one and hook x, y offset up to here. And this is my x offset, so let's drop it into offset min, offset max. My y offset goes into this offset min, offset max, and I can drop both these into the add function. So now I'm going to have to go ahead and modify the individual building graph again, because I set it up to not be using this. So in individual building, let me go ahead and hook this combined multiply node on up, and it's still working. Perfect. I can go ahead and delete all of these. And that ties up the graph even more. And back under buildings, I can just hook this on up. And where's my debug node? Here it is. Let's see what we have. All right, there is the block, which corresponds to the size of one of these buildings, if you can kind of eyeball it here. Now I need to create a grid in the exact same way I create the floor grid. So let's go ahead and look at the individual building for creating the floor grid. I'm creating a points grid. Oh, I forgot to add variables for this floor grid. So, you know, I should go ahead and do that. I'm surprised I didn't notice that. 15, 15. Oh yeah, look at that. The buildings uh, don't extend the floors on out. OK, so back to creating the variable for this floor grid. The grid extents is going to be the grid size times building size. Divided by 2. And let's hook that up to grid extents. That shouldn't have changed anything. Well, it will have changed something, but uh, 
there we go. So that's looking good for the total size of the floors. Now I need to modify their offset a little bit. All right, so offset, hmm, cell size, 400 by 400 by 100. So I can just drop grid size straight into cell size. Nothing's changed there. And grid center position. Remember, I hook this up here, and then it's going to be half of cell size. Also, this needs to be uh, zeroed out. So let's go ahead and multiply grid center position. I'm going to create an attribute here. Create attribute, have that zero. Multiply last dot z by zero and hook that on up. That should fix the z axis. Great. Now I just need to fix that offset, which is, remember, half of my grid size, so 200 by 200. I'm going to divide grid size by 2. And I believe it was subtraction that was needed. Let's go ahead and see. I'll first subtract it from this one. So I only have to do that final multiply once because this is adding in 150. And drop that in here. And this is a bit of a tangled mix. mess. I'll have to organize it. And there we go. Everything lines up. All right. So yeah, if you look at this, for the extents, I am multiplying grid size by building size and dividing by 2. For the center position, I am multiplying grid size by building size divided by 2, and then subtracting half of grid size from it and zeroing out the z position. And that uh, is a lot of steps to create the floor, floor grid, but uh, now it is dynamically being created. And let's see, I should be able to convert this to a subgraph and reuse it. So collapse sub subgraph, pcg underscore create floor grid. And now grid size and building size are two inputs. Looks like building size is in B. So in B, I'll rename it to building size. And this is going to be the, basically the extents. So just size, let's call it. And cell size. is used in multiple places. So I'll keep it named cell size. And let's hook it up to A here and to this divide here. And now I can delete the multiply in A and the divide in A. And output will be points grid and still nothing has changed perfect exactly what I wanted to see so buildings let's go ahead and oh let's move this new grid over to functions and drag in the create floor grid function And you may be wondering why I've got this point to four corners. It seems unnecessary. Well, yes and no. So let me go ahead and hook this block size up to the create grid and hook this up to debug. There we go. We have our grid. 
Let's just leave this point to four corners for now. We'll get back to it later. Now we need to randomize the size of the points. So let me start off by adding an attribute noise. And I'm going to add in a variable that I'll be randomizing to determine all of these random points. I'm going to call that add attributes and it's going to be building size and I actually need to make a new value so I've got building size but I need building size to actually be a range. So it shouldn't be 0 to 12, it should be something to 12. So let's go ahead and modify the blueprint again. Building size min and building size max, which is going to break things. So let me go ahead and set the default value for building size min. Let's say 5, 5, and then 5, building size max, 10, 10, and 10. The final value is going to be the height of the building. Now back in individual building, let's go ahead and uh, fix it so it works for now. I'll update everything to look at building size max. And this one as well. And is that everything? Yes, okay, great. Okay, so back here, the range that I'm going to want is building size max and building size min. And I'll subtract min from max, and this is the random range that I'm going to want to, well, randomize. Building size min is not visible. Okay, back in the back in the actor, let's make it visible, compile and save again, and there we go. Alright, so this is not billing size max, it's billing size max minus billing size min. Yeah, subtract the two. And now I can multiply this attribute noise by this range. And if I debug this, we've got and I want the output target to be building size dot x. And let's multiply Ah, building size needs to be a vector here. There we go. Alright, so now building size dot x is 0, 5, etc. I can do the same thing with the Y noise. And on this multiply, I'll set last dot Y for both of these. Building size cannot be broadcasted. Ah, density needs to be setting 
density here. All right, so the bug was saying, the error was saying that um, building size basically wasn't a vector, and that's because I had the input source on this attribute noise as density, and the output was source, but the source here was building size. All right, so now let's look at this one, and you can see building size x and y are the same. So let's go ahead and fix that. In this attribute noise, I'm going to change the seed to, let's just say, 1 for 1 and 2 for the second one. And there we go. Now they're different values. So now I have building size x and y going from 0 to 5 or so. I need to add the min back in. Go ahead and add that in here. And I'm going to add building size. And the last is already building size min. So there we go. We have our building sizes. And you know what? Let's go ahead and add in the random height right here, too. And this one's going to be 3. And last.z. Hmm. So last wasn't working quite right, so I've just changed it over to density, and that seems to fix the problem. And now we have x, y, and z sizes set. I'm just going to go ahead and truncate these. And there we go. We've got nice whole numbers. And now we just have to add the building size min back in, which we already did. And there we go. So we've got our random range of building sizes. So, if we debug this, let's hook it up to the debug node and change the debug node to extents and turn off this debug. Well, we're not seeing anything. That's because we have to actually modify the bounds. So, I'm going to take a multiply node and multiply grid size. and building size and output to bounds max dot let's just do dot xy and dot xy for everything I don't want to modify the bounds max dot z because that'll be some rather tall things that we don't need for now all right let's see what we got now We've got a messy little grid, and if we add self-pruning in, all equal, we've got a few points. And now here we come to why I created these points. Let's add debug to these two. And that might not work. I don't think these points are big enough. No, the bounds aren't quite big enough. So let's instead add their own debug, absolute. And there we go. So this is the bounds of the block. And as you can see, two of these buildings are already outside the bounds. So what I'm going to do is create a spline here and use that as a difference node. So, create spline, and this is why we created these four corners, linear closed loop, turn off debug, and spline sampler. This is going to be on spline, distance, distance increment, let's just set to that 400 range, so grid size, break that, and take the x attribute. If 
for the distance increment. And now let's uh, see what this looks like in debug. Can't really see it. So now I want a bounds modifier so that we can see it. Oh, right. Sorry, unbounded. Keep forgetting. Oh, there we go. We can see it. But I'm still going to make a bounds modifier to make it easier to deal with. Bounds modifier. Let's set it to set effect steepness, negative 50, 50, negative 50, 50, negative 50, 50. And now let me add a difference node right before self-pruning so that we remove ones that can't possibly spawn and then self-prune the rest. Difference. Set it to binary. Hook that on up. And now let's see what we've got. There we go, it removed some of them. Alright, so let me go ahead and hook this bounds modifier up to the debug and remove this one. Alright, so we've got our outer bounds and we've got our inner bounds. Let's make sure everything butts up against each other. So let's set the minimum size to 1-1 one, one, and max size to 1-1 one, one as well. And something's going on here. I'm not seeing anything. Billing size does not match input. All right, let's set density. Force it to density. And that seems to fix the issue. There we go. All right, so instead of relying on source for this attribute noise, just set it to density. That seems to be a little more reliable. Okay, so now here, well, this isn't working quite right. The points aren't right next to each other. Let's see if we can see why. Let's check out the self-pruning here. Bounds max, 400. Bounds min, negative 1. Interesting, interesting. Let's go ahead and... See what's going on. Okay, so create floor grid is setting the bounds to negative one. Let's go ahead and add a bounds modifier node right before billing size. And set it to set. And the bounds min should be zero, zero. Does, max doesn't matter. And negative 50, 50 on the Z axis. And I'll also set steepness. And that doesn't appear to have changed anything. So let's try setting the bounds min to 1, 1. There we go. So the self-pruning was seeing the points right up against each other and removing them. So adding, setting them to 1 bounds at the minimum has provided a one unit buffer space between all of these and it allows them to all spawn. And let me see here. Let's set the block size down to 10, 10, so it's easier to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this isn't quite working. These points are taking out the edge points when they shouldn't be, so I need to actually modify the bounds to be further out, so trim off this inner side of it. Let's see how we do that. Bounds modifier. Negative 50, negative 50. Let's set it to 0 to 100 and see if that moves it out. Nope, that just shifts it along the spline. So negative 50, 50 here. 0 to 100 here. And that seems to have moved it inwards. So negative 100 and 0. And there we go. We've got our splines lining up perfectly. And just to add a little tiny buffer, I'm going to set it to negative 100. 101 and negative 1. Just like that, uh, self-pruning had a buffer. Okay, so now we've got 
our one size working. Let's set it back up to some reasonable sizes. Four or five. And now we aren't seeing anything. All right, so what's going on here? Building size is broken again. All right, let's change this to multiply density by last.x. There we go. OK, so we need to be kind of explicit in some of our multiply nodes. Let's just modify all of these multiply nodes. There we go. All of them are saying density now instead of relying on last.x. And if I check this, hey, there we go. 4 to 8, 2 to 8. Perfect. We've got all of our, all of our buildings spawning. They're butting up against each other. Now we just need to uh, randomize these things. So let's see if we can just hook it on up here. OK, so where do I want to put this? I need to hook this set of things up to this copy points as the target. So let's just drag this on way over here, uncheck the get actor data. And actually, no, I do want this actor data here, so let me hook it on back up here, because I do need to center all this stuff on the actor. Let's try this again. I need to copy these points on up, and the place I want to do it is right before I start doing everything random, so right here at this attribute noise. So let me add a copy points here, and the target will be this points grid, which is the individual blocks, and let's hook this up to the source. And now I want to attribute noise all of this. And then I want to copy points right after this bounce modifier as well. Targets. There we go. So now we are creating a bunch of individual points for blocks, creating a bunch of uh, layouts for the block specific data, which is the grid, which is sized to the block, and the bounds, which is also sized to the block, randomizing each individual block down to a bunch of different buildings. And now let's see if we can uh, hook it up to this subgraph. Oh, we're getting something, but it's not quite right. So let me uh, reduce the total blocks a little bit so it doesn't take as long to generate. And what's happening here is that I've randomized the size of the buildings um, you know, based on this self-pruning node, but I've still left the buildings as 10 by 10. So I need to fix that. And that's that back under individual buildings. So the building size I need to set is right here. And from the input, I can see, let's inspect this one. We have our building size x, y, and z values. So let's use them. Get attribute from point index. Point index will be 0. Output out attribute name and input source, building size, and building size. And now if I look at this, there's my building size. All right, so I've got my building size max, and I just have to hook it up here. And building size right up here, and let's see what this does. Huh, not quite. Yeah, I need to set the floor grid as well. Hook that on up. And there we go. We've got a bunch of little buildings. 
This one's a little odd, is that right? Oh, hey, look at that. That's pretty cool. All right, let's make a couple more blocks and see if it looks good. There we go. Going pretty decently. So, I can do one more thing here. It's starting to slow down a little bit, I think, as it goes on, and that's because it's spawning a lot of instant static meshes all in one ISM. And if I play here, I can show you something else. The building doesn't have collision. So let's go ahead and add collision and uh, split these up into slightly faster spawners. That I can do within the individual building subgraph. Hmm. What happened here? Why is everything just so far off? Weird. Don't need building size max here, don't need building size max here, and don't need it here. Okay, so... What I'm going to do... Yeah, this floor is off too. Hmm. How bizarre. Ceiling's off. Let's fix that too. Save everything. So, what I'm going to do now is take advantage of this target actor. And this is going to let me slightly speed up some of my spawn speeds, I hope. I'm going to create a target actor, set a template actor class actor, and just hook it up to each of these static mesh spawners. And what this is going to do... is make an actor for each building. And I can also slightly organize them better if I change it to type... Oh wait, it is type attached. It's not attaching though, and that is because... buildings right here is set to movable. So let's change it to static, compile and save that. And now, there we go, now they're all attached. So that's... Uh, little way to keep them organized. Okay, so now let's uh, expand it again. 15 by 15. Oh, 15 by 51. Nope, 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 that's a little big. There we go, 15 by 15. And they're spawning in a little bit faster now. There we go. But they still don't have collision. So let me set that back to 1-1. One, one. And now what I'm going to do is take advantage of this actor that I'm creating and make my own little actor. BP underscore building holder. If I open this up, I can add a box collision component. And the box I'm going to set to extents. Let's start with 111. Compile and save this. And let's also set it to static. Compile and save again. And now back under individual buildings. Let's go ahead and just save everything. Back under the individual buildings, template actor class will be this BP underscore building holder. And so now I've got a bunch of building holders spawned. The box collider you can't see, so let me expand it a little bit so we can see it.
And there we go, it's just spawning in the default location. So what I need to do is move this location to be around each building. Under individual building, create target actor, there's this actor pivot point. So what I can do is make a transform, plug that into actor pivot, and now I've changed where the actor is spawning. So I need a center point, which I can get from right here, from this point. Attribute reduce. I'm going to reduce the position to, eh, it doesn't really matter, average, minimum, it's all the same, and plug that into translation. And the scale, well, that is my building size times grid size. So let's just take, how about this building size times grid size, and drop it right at scale. And this is something weird that I found. When I start modifying the building's sizes using this um, actor pivot, some of the static meshes don't spawn right. And that's only when I have create target actor set to attach. So I'm going to change this to in folder. And there we go, that's fixed the issue. And now if you look up, the um, meshes are a little off. So let's go back to building holder and set the box down to 1, 1, 1. Compile and save that. And now see what we've got. A little bit closer. Looks like the collision box is about half a building width off where it should be centered. All right, let's go ahead and take the scale, which is got from here, divide by two, and add it to the position. And there we go, now the position looks a little bit better centered. Let's just double check it, eight by eight. And there we go. It's centered in a decent position. The z-axis, yeah, the z-axis is fine. All right, so there we have it. We have a bounding box, and now you may wonder, why did we create this bounding box? Well, let's go into building holder, and we'll go into the box component, and on component begin overlap. I'm going to add other actor equals equals. Get player pawn. Put a branch in here. So if it's the player pawn, and let's go ahead and get components by class. The class is going to be instanced static mesh component and drop a for each for each loop for each one of these set collision enabled type will be let's say Korean physics hook that on up and compile save and do you remember there wasn't any collision so let's play and see what happens We're colliding now. So let me do one more thing for efficiency. Once it has set all of these to collision enabled, I'm going to add another option, unbind all events from on component begin overlap. That way it'll only fire off once and enable all collision rather than continually trying to enable collision. Compile and save that. And, well, let's make this a lot larger. BP Buildings, 
building size min, let's set the block size to 2020. Building size min, let's do 4 to 15 for each of these. And let me zero out the location, zero, zero, and crank it up to 20 by 20 blocks. And there we go, everything's spawning in, pretty satisfying. Oh, let's, let's make these a little taller. Building size min 15 to 45. And we've got a city starting to spawn. All right, so there you go. Now you can create a randomized city of skyscrapers, and it goes pretty fast, and it'll even have collision. So, all right, I hope you enjoy.